somebody wrote a book, then I was guided. But he was not guided. Because of, look, look what Allah is saying here. Allah is saying, if they believed in the same of what you, the companions, believe, then they are guided. What was his book? Then I was guided. What did his book contain? Slandering the companions of the Prophet. Claiming that they conspired against, against uh, the Prophet. They conspired against the Ahlul Bayt, etc., etc. Which is not true. This is the guidance. The verse is very clear. If they believed in what you, the companions, believed in, then they are guided. I want you to remember that verse. It's in Surat Al-Baqarah. So those who collected the Quran, they cannot be dalin, misguided. Otherwise, if we say that, then the Jews and the Christians are excused not to become Muslims. You may say this is strange. It is true. Because they'll be saying, wait a minute, this Quran has been collected by those evil people. So we cannot, we cannot accept your Quran. That is why we always say, slandering them, it opens the door against the Quran. And also the Prophet praised his, his age, his century, his generation, and also praise the generation that comes after him and the generation that comes after him. But the best generation that the Prophet praised is the companions. Didn't he know that the companions are going to be evil people, as some people claim? Didn't he know that? And also the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even praised the companions. He said, he described them that those who are with the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, they are strong, hard against the disbelievers, merciful towards the believers. Merciful. This is Allah's testimony. Allah is bearing witness that those companions are merciful towards one another. And the way that people bring narrations, it proves the, the opposite. They will tell you that, no, they were not merciful, they were conspiring. They wanted to kill the Prophet. Even they said that Aisha wanted to kill the Prophet. She put the poison to the Prophet ﷺ to kill him. And he was saying to them, don't kill me, don't kill me. And they were trying, Aisha and Hafsa, they were trying to kill him. They were pushing him, compulsing him to take the poison. How come? Come on. Come on. Abu Jahl, Abu Jahl, he opposed the Prophet and Allah broke his nose. His nose. Abu Lahab, the same thing. Those who opposed the Prophet, والسلام, they were broken. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accomplished what he promised. Shall we say, but except Aisha and Hafsa? It can't be. It can't be. <coughs> Everything that goes against the verses of the Quran, we, the Sunnah and the Shia, we say that. Everything goes against the Quran, it should be rejected. It should be refused. The Quran is describing the companions that they are merciful towards one another. How can we, re we reject Allah's testimony towards the companions? It can't be. And we were prohibited from slandering or insulting even one of them. Al-Qadi Ayyad, one of the Muslim Sunni leaders, he's well known, he said, أَحَدِهِمْ مِنَ الْكَبَائِرِ Slandering or insulting or speaking against one of them is one of the major sins. وَمَذْهَبُنَا Our madhab, وَمَذْهَبُ الْجُمْهُورِ And the majority, the mass majority of scholars, أَنَّهُ يُعَزَّرُ وَلَا يُقْتَلْ He'll be punished, but not to be killed. Punished, uh, for example, whipped, lashed. Something that the judge, for example, may decide <coughs> but not to be killed. But also we have Ahmad, Imam Ahmad, he said, if you find a man mentioning the one of the companions of the Prophet negatively, speaks against him, you should accuse him that there's something wrong with his whole Islam. Now, there's a, there's a beautiful word here that Ar-Razi said. Where is that? 
Oh, so I should be using this one. Okay. Now look here. I don't know if you, if you, for those who know Arabic, he says, Imam Abu Zura Al Razi. He's well-known scholar, and the early time. I think it's his uh, the second generation. He said, "If you see the man slandering one of the companions of the Messenger of Allah, then you should know that he is zindiq. Zindiq means heretic." وَإِنَّمَا أَدَّى إِلَيْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ وَالسُّنَّةَ أَصْحَابُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ. Verily, most certainly, the, the, those who delivered the Quran and the Sunnah. None, none but the companions of the, of the Messenger of Allah. Who? Who else? وَإِنَّمَا يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يَجْرَحُوا شُهُودَنَا But they want... <coughs> but they want to break the credibility of our witnesses because the companions are the witnesses of the Quran and the Sunnah. And they want... They want to... Uh, to, to, uh, to invalidate the credibility of those witnesses in order to invalidate the book and the sunnah but those people those people's credibility should be rather invalidated and they are heretic this is what uh, Imam Ibn Zura uh, mentioned a question that is always raised are all the companions udul trustworthy? You know, sometimes people bring this question. Are they all trustworthy? All of them? And some of the brothers may be confused by this question. Because if he says yes, they're going to bring, for sure, they're going to bring to him some, you know, one story, one companion to break this rule. But the answer, as I wrote here, originally, basically, which is the original rule that, yes, the companions, all the companions are adul, trustworthy, unless if we have one, two, some exemptions, some exceptional cases. And those exceptional cases are mentioned. Like Al-Walid ibn Aqba. Al-Walid ibn Aqba, it had been narrated even by Muslim that uh, uh, that he is, he brought a wrong new. He, he, someone came and, and he thought that they are uh, enemies, etc. He claimed that uh, they wanted to take his money, etc. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse, Ya ladina amanu, in ja'akum fasiqum binaba in fatabayyanu. O you who believe, who have believed, if a fasiq, a rebellious transgressor, he came with the news to you, then you have to verify it. And we've been told that this verse was revealed concerning Al-Walid ibn Aqba. But we know that when there is a rule, if there is one exceptional case, two exceptional case, which is un, which is abnormal case, it doesn't break the normality of the rule. It doesn't. That's why we say in Arabic, ash-shadhu la hukma la. The abnormal case, it has no consideration. It doesn't break the original rule that we have, that yes, the companions are trustworthy. Unless we have something very clear about someone, then we say yes. So it doesn't break the rule. But one question should be raised to those people. Are those Muhajirun and Ansar that Allah repeatedly praised them in the Quran, are they trustworthy to you or not? Now you say that you are with the Quran, you go with the Quran, you never, dis you, you, you never go against the Quran. You tell me, Allah praised the, the, uh, the, 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 the Muhajirin and Al Ansar in general. He didn't say except for one or two. No. All of them. Do you go with the Quran or not? You know, if you go with the Quran, you'll be blocked or stumbled by Abu Bakr. 